Amy. And I'm Laura. And I'm Lauren. Today we're interviewing debut author Lauren James for her book The Next Together. So me and Laura got sent a great copy of the art copy The Next Together and now we're here with Lauren to discuss her new book. So can you explain a bit of what your book is about for those who don't know? Yes, yeah, so my book The Next Together is a young adult novel aimed at teenagers aged 14 plus and it's a reincarnation romance which means that it's about uh, two teenagers, Catherine and Matthew, who keep being brought back to life throughout history and every time they have to save the world and fall in love along the way. And it's amazing. <laughs> it's such a good book. We both really enjoyed reading it. It was absolutely fantastic. I think it's just such an original take on YA and romance, especially like having the reincarnation romance. It should be its own genre. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Although I don't think they could write another book about it. I think you've got it now. Yeah. It's yeah. your genre now. Yeah. I think there could be another one. <laughs> if someone copied it, I think I'd be a bit annoyed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do it as well either because yeah. it's like there's so much going on in just like it's not a huge book it's just a good amount it's mm. a good size yeah, yeah. that like, so much goes on mm. and it's like just it blew my mind that's such the <laughs> end but this is a no, non-spoiler yeah. video yeah. So yes, don't talk about no <laughs> we won't talk about the end so yeah because i think because there's four timelines it ends up being there's so much happening in each one that you do feel like you've had like a bit of every genre mixed yeah. together. Yeah. So. We're wondering so, actually, where would what genre would you put your book in? Because it is such a <laughs> crazy mix match. <laughs> I think it's actually classified as dystopian, which I don't think it is at all. But yeah. uh, I guess that's kind of the closest you can get because mm. it's about saving the world when it's yeah. going wrong. So yeah. um, science fiction romance, I would probably yeah. say. I don't yeah. know. I, I, I wrote it because I wanted to combine like. Jane Austen and Doctor Who. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, it's pretty much everything. And that's probably why we like it so much. <laughs> yeah. English students who love Doctor Who, so it's yeah. yeah. perfect. Love it. <laughs> in my audience. Yeah. And because you like did chemistry and physics here at universities, not even we like the chemistry insert as like you don't run at home. Some of the timelines are set at the University of Nottingham, and that's really cool because you know about the chemistry. We're like. Did you know about that? <laughs> yeah, so um, a lot of that was literally because I, I started writing it in my first year of university when I was in halls at the New Stewart oh. and um, I was studying chemistry and I was doing like chemistry labs and stuff. So when I started thinking about who my protagonists were going to be, they ended up being University of Nottingham not yeah. chemistry students like me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that helped um, get, give like a uh, a lot of realism to a book which in places is very, you have to suspend your disbelief. Yeah. So I really liked having that one timeline which was more set in reality. Yeah. Yeah. We were wondering what influenced you to write this book and where did you get your inspiration from? Um, so I've always been a big reader and um, like I was always the kid that took every book out of the library yeah. and I used to get the books out on my mum's library card and my dad's and my brother's and mine so I'd go home with like 30 books a week. Yeah. And, um, but I never really thought about writing, I was always just a reader and um, I always thought like you had to be like middle aged to be a, a, a writer, yeah. like you couldn't write as a kid because you didn't know anything. Yeah. Basically, was my thoughts. Um, and then when I got to 18 I was just like that's a stupid reason not to write, I should yeah. just do it if I want to write. So um, I uh, did it for NaNoWriMo, oh, the National Novel yeah. Writing Month. And um, I didn't get very far, I think I wrote 16,000 words and you're supposed to write 50,000 <laughs> over the course of the month. Um, but that sort of inspired me. And because um, I sort of started it off the cuff just before Nano um, yeah. what I did was I made a list of all of my favourite like things in books. So yeah. I looked in my bookshelf and I went, what do I like about this book? What do I like about yeah. this one? And they were all kind of things like um, secret maps and yeah. like treasure troves and like orphans who are on the run and like <laughs> long boat journeys and yeah. stuff like that. So I had this huge list of things that um, I liked in books mm -hmm. and I tried to think of something that would like combine them all together yeah. and that ended up being the next together. <laughs> <laughs> so like I did creative writing here at the University of Nottingham and I just I wanted to know if you had like a top tip of like your writing process or just like how you come up with like a book in so little time. Oh, what would you recommend? <laughs> um, I think just you've got to find an idea that you absolutely love and you're really enthusiastic about because that sh comes out in the writing and if you are just writing a book because you want to write like to a trend, like yeah. if you want to write like, oh I'm going to write a dystopian book like The Hunger Games or The Maze Ring or Divergent. <laughs> but you're not in love with that idea, that's yeah. going to come through. So, um, yeah, just write what you really love, even if it ends up being zombie cats. Because <laughs> there's always going to be an audience yeah. for it. And yeah, that's going to end, you're going to end up finishing the book because you want to know what happens. Yeah. So that makes yeah. a huge difference. 
<laughs> yes, yeah. I think um, I wrote a lot of it before I'd got a book deal, and I think that helped because if I, after I got the book deal, I was kind of like, but people are going to read this. I can't write yeah. things that people are going to read. Yeah. So like, it took me a while to get over that. So yeah, yeah. So it was good having it sort of written in advance. Yeah, I know a lot of authors. Do you think this will be a trilogy? Um, it's at the minute it's two books. So it's this book and then a, sort of a companion novel. Yeah. Um, it's not like a direct. Uh, sequel, mm. but um, it's, it's open I think, to be a third book if yeah. it got really popular. Yeah, but we'll have to see. <laughs> I know with a lot of trilogies, authors say the second book can be the hardest because you yeah. tend to have an ending in mind and a beginning in mind, yeah. and filling the gap in the middle can be quite difficult. Definitely. That's kind of why I didn't want to do a trilogy because I just yeah. wanted to keep, I didn't want to have to like spread things out yeah. to cover three books. I wanted to write the story and then move on and write something new. So, but yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff to play with if I was going to write a new yeah. So I think I'd like to go back <laughs> in a year or two, go back yeah. to the characters. <laughs> We were talking about like if the next together become like a film or like a TV show. We thought this would be a really cute little question. <laughs> like if you had like Matthew and Catherine, have you got any like ideas like of who you Cats. want to play? Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, so many ideas. Um, but they're all sort of like old because obviously they're teenagers. So everyone I like see in stuff yeah. is like um, too old now. But yeah. When I was writing them, I always pictured Matthew as Ben Wishaw. That's like actually who I pictured. As Hugh and James Bond, <laughs> like the glasses. Who I and yeah. Yeah. I imagine yeah. I've <laughs> done my job right. <laughs> and then um, Catherine is Rose Leslie from Game of Thrones. She's like oh. ginger hair and a bit sassy. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, but obviously if there was a film, I'd have to leave that up to them. So yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't get much to say. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine you don't have much control over things like the cover and stuff, but do you think The Last Beginning will have a matching cover? Because the next together so. is gorgeous. Yeah, <laughs> they're designing the cover for The Last Beginning at the minute, and I keep being like, I would like circles. <laughs> I think that would yeah. match really yeah. well. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a really great designer. He also designed all of like the inside and yeah. the graphics. Yeah. So I trust in him to do yeah. a good job. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice how you set up the timelines and like the little um, entries of like the 2019 yeah. like yeah. thing. Because it's like when you're reading a book, sometimes it gets like you bogged down in the writing. But yeah. it was just so fast paced to get through. I read it really quickly yeah. because like <laughs> it was like oh the 2019 one and then another timeline. It was really exciting and fast paced to get through. Oh, that's <laughs> I even noticed reading it. There was like different fonts for each. Time yes. on there that's yeah. there. there's more like a modern font for the, is it 2034? 2039. 2039, yeah. the nothing one I know, that was kind of more modern because it was a bit more futuristic. Yeah, and they get more and more old fashioned. Yeah, because yeah. I was reading, um, it's a great book as well, partly because it's got all those inserts with the pictures, because I, I think that's kind of a thing coming through in YA, people like to yeah, read something with a bit different, yeah. and I definitely like that, and I remember I was reading, um, what made me notice the change in font was it was some of the notes between Catherine and Matthew, the 2019 timeline, and because uh, that was handwritten in a smaller font, and then it went for the Carlisle timeline, and I was like, oh, the font's different. <laughs> <laughs> that's what made me notice. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, and across the top of the pages, there's timelines that match yeah. up with the timeline in, on that page, oh. and so it changes. Yeah. It's, it's really good. I just love it so yeah. much. Yeah. I really <laughs> like the inserts of like your future predictions. Like I think it said King William, and I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like World War Three, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that one yeah. I hope it didn't happen, but it was like really like it was good how it was probably possible. Yeah. And it felt so real. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot more of that in the next book. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I, I did a lot of the um, sort of extracts to because um, I wanted something that tied it all together because yeah. a, a lot of the storylines they had, I was in danger of them feeling just like separate books. Yeah, and I needed something to bring them all into one, so yeah, really connected with the characters. So. Yeah, and also because they're sort of the idea is they keep. Um, falling in love and then being separated. Mm. I wanted um, to show what they were like when they're actually 
in love in like yeah. an established relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how the 2019 story started, was mm. just showing them together yeah. and happy. Yeah. Like, it's so sad. <laughs> I needed that. Yeah. 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 Do you actually have a favourite Matthew and Catherine? Um, I think the 1745 mm. one, when they're um, sort of defending the city against yeah. the Jack White uprising. Because I, I really like my Regency romance series. And, um, there's a lot more of that storyline in the sequel. Mm. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Let's let's, <laughs> let's pretend it's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's my favourite. <laughs> and one of the other things we loved about the book is the lesbian grandmas. Obviously, they were so funny and they were so diverse. I absolutely loved that because at first I was like, "Why she got? Is it like grandma and nan or something?" Like, yeah. I was like, "Why is she t- saying using different way- words?" And I was like, "Oh, that's so good." <laughs> you know, recently had like the equality, like you you can marry, and it's yeah. like the next generation of that. It's sort of yeah. so clever. Because I said, because it's set in 2039, and at that point there will be like married grandmothers and yeah. grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so I wanted to do that, and I'm a big um, supporter of sort of diversity in the We Need yeah. Diverse Books campaign. And, um, the sequel, The Last Beginning, has uh, an LGBT protagonist and it's an LGBT romance. So oh, it was wow. a big thing for me getting that into the first yeah. book as well because uh, The Lesbian Grandmas actually only came about in the second uh, set of edits when I got a book oh, deal. Okay. Because before that, I didn't really know that diversity was mm. a thing that people were like fighting for in literature. Because yeah. you know, if you're not in the publishing world, you don't yeah. hear about stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so it was only at, when I'd already got a book deal that I started thinking about that actively. So. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of your favourite books? Oh, that's a big question. How <laughs> long is this video going to be? Um, so five. <laughs> okay, okay. Top okay. Five. <laughs> um, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. Um, Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. Um, the Sandman graphic novel series by Neil Gaiman. Uh, Northern Lights by Philip Pullman and The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Niffeliger. So. <laughs> Did you get some inspiration from The Time Traveller's Wife? Yes, yeah, it was a big inspiration. I read that book so many times yeah. when I was a kid and I always cried and yeah. I wanted something that like makes you connect that strongly. Yeah. Because I don't think I'd ever cried at a book before yeah. that book, so <laughs> it was a big inspiration. <laughs> We really loved all the characters, they were really like interesting and they were like so 3D and you didn't have much of a space to like discuss them all and there's so many of them, there's like eight Matthew and Catherine <laughs> yeah. the entire thing and then you just like really fall in love with all of them and it's really great how that happened. That was good. Yeah, I, I fall in love with them too. I love them so much. I think because I, I started writing a sequel because I got to the end of the book and I was like, I'm not ready to let yeah. them. Yeah, there needs Aww. to be another one. So yeah, I, I definitely. Yeah. I a lot. <laughs> and I'm glad other people do. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> I think if you didn't, you'd get very bored because there's so <laughs> many different versions yeah. of them. But yeah. I think that's all the questions we've got for you. I think I said everything and asked all the questions I wanted to. And it's been so nice talking to you today. Thank you so much for having me. This has been really fun. Bye! Bye. <laughs> <laughs>